Hi everyone, Talia from Zart Art and today we're going to be creating a paper collage which incorporates an LED light and paper circuit. So here's my little example of my paper collage with my little LED light sitting just there. Now on the back we've got our paper circuit, our conductive path and just with this little switch when I press it you should see the light is going on and off as I press down on that little switch which joins the path of my circuit. Now I'm not an engineer but I feel like one and you can too. Okay, So to create a circuit you only need three things. First we have our conductive path which will be our copper tape and the next thing you'll need is a battery. So we've got these little lithium batteries that we'll be using as our power source. And the last thing you'll need is your electrical component, which will be our little yellow LED light. So this is the circuit that we'll be creating for our collage. As you can see, it's very simple. Also, if you want to use a battery pack, there are also battery packs that you can use, which means you can turn your circuit on and off with a simple switch. However, we're just going to be using a plain battery and creating our own little switch to make things a bit simpler. So my little switch here will close the circuit and this is what will make the light turn on and off whenever you want it to. So to begin our little paper collage, I'm going to be using these little a6 mount cards just because it's a nice way of working in a smaller size and it will give a nice frame to our work as well as adding a little bit of bulk because we're going to have all of our paper circuits on the back we want it to have a little bit of bulk so it doesn't fold over or get too heavy on the back so we'll have our mount board as well as watercolor paper our little watercolor paints and we'll start our collage from there so to begin just a background, so I'm just going to layer some colour over my watercolour paper. And because we are working in A6 and our watercolour paper is a little bit larger than A6, I'm just going to cut it down smaller. So this watercolour paper that I'm using is about 300 GSM and it's a handmade watercolour paper, so it's got some really lovely texture as well as a good thickness. Now our watercolour, I'm just going to lay down some colour, so a bit of wet on wet mixing, so all the colours will blend nicely together. Okay, now we've got our background done, leave that to dry. I've got this pre-prepared one that we'll be using because that's already nice and dry. Then the next step is to create our foreground. So just these little grass pieces which will sit in another piece of mounted frame. And we'll just do that by grabbing another piece of watercolour paper. I'm going to trim down a pretty thin piece and then a little bit thicker because we've got two layers of grass. So one layer of grass is going to sit behind the other to create those two layers. So it'll be easier to paste down if you've got two separate layers. And now I'm just going to watercolor these and then chop them to create that really nice blade of grass texture.
now we've got our blades of grass. So I'm going to be using this one, which is already dry, but you understand the process in how to create those. Next are our little birch trees. How good's a birch tree? So you can see our birch trees are in the background as well as in the foreground. So to create your little birch trees, we're going to be using the off cuts of our watercolor paper from our background as well as our blades of grass. So all up, you should only need to use two pieces of this handmade watercolor paper, which is about um, probably just a bit bigger than A6. It's in a complete square, so it's not A5 or A6. So depending on how many birch trees you want, I'm feeling, I don't want to overcrowd my collage, so about six will do. I'll show you how to make one because I've got a few that are pre-made here. So what I like to do, depending on your thickness, and I think a birch tree should vary in thickness. If you ever go to a birch tree forest, I like saying birch tree. So you can vary thicknesses. So this is about a medium thickness. Remember you are working in A6, so you want to make things quite small, otherwise you will overcrowd your collage quite easily. Now with a ruler and just my black permanent fine liner, just place your ruler right on the edge of your watercolour paper, just so you have enough room to draw a line down. And if it is not completely the same on either side, don't worry, that adds to the mystery and the beauty of your artwork. That's what I like to say. Okay, now these little textures in our birch tree are just very simple little lines and dashes either side in the middle. Just have fun with it. You can tell when I'm getting... This video just get looser and looser. Okay, that's an adequate amount of texture for me. And what you'll notice is your birch tree is too long for your frame which is great because now you can make little birch tree branches. So cutting off the ends of your tree, you can glue those little branches down either side of your tree, but don't do too much because your artwork will look too busy. Hot tip. Now, we are ready to put our collage together. And once our collage is together, we can work on our circuit. So background we will place with our mounting board. I am going to use double-sided tape because I have no time to wait for my glue to dry, but you can use glue. foreground and again you can pick whether you want black or white there's lots of options I'm going to go black because it's moody and mysterious so make sure you figure out which layers going on top and which ones going behind and we'll stick those down with our double-sided tape Our two layers of grass are on there. Now I want to create a little bit more depth in my collage. So you can either use another frame if you've got a few frames to spare. Otherwise you can just put some cardboard in between the two layers because you're not going to see in between. This one does have cardboard in between instead of another frame. because so I was feeling stingy with my frames when I made this. And if you are feeling stingy with your frames, which is completely fair, then use cardboard instead of adding 
another layer of your mount board. But this layer of mount board is going to include some of our little birch trees. So I'm going to have a little play with my composition with my birch trees. I'm going to sit some on my background layer as well as sitting some in my middle ground layer and maybe even a cheeky birch or two in between my blades of grass. I've mulled over my birch position and I think I'm happy with that kind of arrangement. No, I lied. I want to swap this big birch for this slightly thinner birch. Anyway, you could do this probably way too long like I'm doing. So sometimes it's better just to stick down what you think looks good. So I am going to use my double-sided tape. Of course you can use glue and I'm just going to stick these down on their various layers. And I've broken the fourth wall of the frame a little bit as well, which I think is kind of cool. If you're talking to your kids about composition and how you might layer things, you can have it poking out of the frame to add that extra bit of detail. Otherwise, I'm just going to stick down my birches. So once you're happy with your placements, with our background, our middle ground and our foreground, we're just going to stick our layers together with double-sided tape or glue. Uh, we've got our collage completed. Now the last thing that I'm going to add to my collage is my little lightning bug. So I'm just going to draw that out of a little piece of my watercolour paper and then we can poke through our LED light. Okay, we good? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> we good, yep. going to spread that watercolour a little bit so it dries quicker, doesn't matter if it's on your piece of paper because you'll be cutting that out. Of course you don't have to follow my design, you can do whatever kind of collage you like, just think of the best way to incorporate that LED light. Here's my tiny little lightning bug. And now we're going to have to poke our LED through him. So this is gonna require a little bit of surgery. I've got an etching tool, cause it's nice and sharp and this watercolor paper is quite thick. And because we do have to poke it through our background layer as well, figure out where you want to place it. And you can poke a hole through that. If you want something a little bit safer, if you're worried about kids and sharp spikes, do it over a piece of foam or a sponge so then you don't have to worry about the kids accidentally stabbing themselves, which is always a concern. So poke a hole through the background and a hole just through that middle section of your bug. And just work your way through because you need a little bit of space to get the LED through. So there we have our skewered bug. And now my little LED light. Now when you are using the lights and you're about to 
consider how you're going to do your circuit. It's good to get the kids to test out the lights just to make sure the battery does work. Now what you'll find is that the light will glow on one side and won't glow on the other. So you need to have the positive, which is the slightly longer part of the LED touching the positive side of your battery. And you'll know it's the positive side because one has a plus and the other side will have nothing. So I'm going to poke my LED through the little bug and then poke it through that background layer. So there he is sitting in my collage and now we'll flip that. and just separate those two conductors on your LED. And looking at my circuit on the back, we are going to create the same circuit. So what we're going to need is our conductive path. So we've got our copper tape, which I will lay down in the corner. Now don't be put off by this. I'm no engineer, but I feel like an engineer when I'm putting all of this together. Okay, so we've got our first path here, which we will stick our battery to that end. Now I need to make sure this is long enough to be in line with that LED conductor. I overshot it, but that's okay. You can leave that as is. Now remember, our short side is going to have to be in line with our negative side of our battery. So our short side is going to stay on this side of our page. I don't want the wires to cross, so I'm just going to snip the edge off that. And I'm going to use my double-sided tape, tape that down to make sure we've got a nice secure connection, but I'm just going to place everything first. Now to create my little switch, we don't want this to always be in contact with the battery. So I'm going to have a loose piece of paper with my conductive tape. So when you touch it, that will turn the light on and off and create that electric path. your copper tape over the top to create that switch. And just place it down and give it a fold where you want it to sit. And then we're going to put some copper tape over there to join it up. So the front and the back of the copper tape are both conductive.
little bit more copper tape to make sure that that's all connected. Just make sure that everything lines up with where you're going to put the battery. So my battery can sit there and my switch will work, it'll reach. And then just another piece of tape over one half of the battery and that should secure it in place. Cool. So it works and it worked the first time because sometimes it doesn't. So if you're finding that there's problems with the light turning on and off, First thing to check is making sure that the nodes on your LED are in the right place. As shown on this little example, the long is the positive and it needs to connect back up to the positive side of the battery. The short is the negative side and that needs to connect to the bottom of the battery, which is the negative. And they aren't very different in sizes, so it can be very easy to mix up the long and short. So if it's not working, flip those around. And if it's still not working, make sure all of your connections, especially the connection of those LED conductors, are secure to the copper tape. But otherwise, I'm an engineer. And so this is a really fun STEAM activity that can be connected with lots of different subjects from science, even maths, engineering, but you can have a lot of fun with this kind of project and try lots of different kinds of artwork that suit LED lights, or you can even get vibration motors if you're making sculptures and you want them to move, then that can be a really fun activity as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.